Hey, it's Smoke Monster. Welcome to the weekly stream. This week, we're going to talk all about the Mr. FPGA uh, system. It's pretty exciting, and um, last week I was in my Discord channel, and Raisha posted a link to the cores for the Mr. And all of a sudden, it was like a light switch went off, and I realized what this thing is and why it is so important. Uh, so just to start at square one here, FPGA emulation is essentially a way of translating the actual hardware into a schematic. So it's we refer to it as hardware emulation, or um, I just call it a hardware re-implementation re on a chip. And what it allows you to do is theoretically, depending on the author of the core, the, the system that's being emulated in FPGA, uh, you could have essentially perfect lag-free, no latency emulation. And the caveats there are that it depends on the author, so it's not some magic fairy dust that you can just sprinkle on something and call it hybrid emulation or something like that. Uh, it does come down to the author, and that's why you see products like the AVS, the NT Mini, the Super NT, uh, Kevtris is behind the NT Mini and the Super NT, and it's just, it's essentially feels like real hardware to anyone who's touched it, and uh, it compares almost perfectly. So Kevtris is the, kind of the ultimate author of FPGA cores, and a core, um, we just refer to that as, so an FPGA can be reconfigured uh, depending on the how you arrange it. So what you do is usually when you flash an FPGA, you're flashing a, we call it a core, but that's the way that it reconfigures itself to whatever the system is. And so like SD2 SNES has F an FPGA uh, chip on it. And when, you've, when you're running SuperFX or these special chips, uh, what it does is it reconfigures itself to support that chip. So that's the way it works. And so when I'm talking about cores here, each core is a different system. And so f to translate that into console terms, each console could have a core. Uh, if you're talking about the Super NT, the core would be the Super Nintendo. The NT Mini, the core is the NES, and the AVS is NES. NT Mini, if you jailbroke, it has lots of cores you can add that are fantastic. And the Mister is kind of like an open source version of these. So there's no overlap with those to some degree, because even though Mister has an NES core, and maybe one day it'll have a Super Nintendo core, they're just it's going to be a different author. So it's like a different recipe for Super Nintendo, or a different recipe for the NES. And it's not going to be probably competing with Kevtris, you know, unless maybe 10 years down the line you'll have something in those terms. Just because... You don't mess with the Kevtris, he's just that good. He really is. <laughs> the guy's a mad genius. What I want to get into first before we get into anything else, what is it? So a Mister is built on the DE10 Nano, which is an FPGA kind of development board uh, that's $130, and that's basically the core of the system. So if you were thinking of that in uh, Raspberry Pi terms, it would be your Raspberry Pi with no hats or anything. So Mr. is, to have a complete setup that runs all of the cores and all of the games, there's only three things you need. The DE10 Nano, $130. You need an I.O. board that has all the inputs and outputs for analog uh, video. So you can do anywhere from 240p, the native resolution of the consoles, up to 1080p via HDMI. You can do line doubling to 480p, 576p. You can do dual output from the analog and HDMI simultaneously. It can do so HDMI, VGA, component, uh, RGB, RGBS, 15 kilohertz, RGB HV, so um, that's 30, 31 kilohertz. Uh, basically, all of the native resolutions of these consoles are supported via analog, so directly out, and it's very um, res it's very respective to that. So the quirkiness that you get from certain consoles, like the Sharp uh, X68000, you get the quirkiness here because it's matching the native resolution and the native timing. And all you need to connect this up to a PVM or a CRT is a cheap, like five dollar VGA to if you're connecting it to a P uh, PVM uh, VGA to BNC adapter. If you want to hook it up to your old Trinitron CRT or Toshiba or whatever you've got. 
VGA to component cap cable. That's it. Plug it straight in, you're ready to go. No funny stuff. If you connect it via HDMI, you have scaling options. Scan lines, you can do different types of scaling, you can do all sorts of resolutions. You can, really important for arcade people like me, via HDMI, you can rotate the screen. So these vertical games that you would normally have to rotate your actual screen to play, you know, like in an arcade, um, some of the games are flipped vertically, like um, Dig Dug and Donkey Kong. You can flip that via HDMI because you have all of these video scaling options. Rotation and that kind of stuff. And uh, that's all taken care of by the I.O. board. And the, the final piece you need is the SD RAM board, which gives you just basically extra RAM for a bunch of these cores that are going to use it, and faster RAM. And it, um, I think the I.O. board also has a secondary SD card, which is important because a core like uh, MSX and X68000 uses that second card as if it's the hard drive that's in the actual system, which is cool. I'll show you how that works. So those three pieces, uh, those boards, by the way, you can get, you go to the, I have links in the description to the Mr. Wiki, and there's a button here that says how to get boards. Click on that, and it tells you a little bit about the diff the two boards that you need. I mean, there are some extra boards. You can get a real-time clock board, um, which I guess you could use like with Game Boy Pokemon and some of the um, home computers. We'll use that for keeping track of date and time and file changes and things like that, but that's not 100% necessary. And actually you can get by perfectly without it. You don't even need the real-time clock board. And it's just, it's kind of modular like Raspberry Pi. So there's certain things that you could add on like uh, an extra USB hub board, uh, which gives you more connections for controllers and things like that. And uh, actually, uh, Jacob Proctor from Tinkerplunk.com is going to be making a big run of the latest v version 5.5 I.O. board and the latest 1.1 SD RAM boards, which is cool for people in the U.S. And uh, actually, he's going to sell those on Shopify with a discount code SMOKE, all capital letters, and that will give you 20% off. So that'll probably be the cheapest source if you're in the States or even in uh, the Americas. Anyways. If you're all over the world, or if you want one right now, just go to the how do you get how to get boards link, and then click on the add on sale thread. Register at Atari Forum, and then there's a whole bunch of sellers who make these different boards. You can see there's two SD RAM boards. Okay, they're the exact same thing. There's the original, which uh, is the Uni, I guess, and then there's the XS, which means extra small. So it's just a size difference. Theoretically, the XS SD RAM is a bit quicker. But um, we're not. That that'll have to be written into the cores whether or not it takes advantage of that. So I, I'll I'll go with the XS, and that's the one that Jacob's making, just be just in case. And then um, another thing to note is that the I/O boards. Some people are selling them cheaper, but they're unpopulated, and that's more for tinkerers. That probably isn't the one that most people are going to want. You want one that has definitely an SD the SD card slot on it. You know, that kind of stuff and that's what Jacob's gonna be doing so definitely make sure you don't get one that's unpopulated unless you can solder and you have a hot air station and whatnot and you're familiar with that stuff you also need uh, a fan on the IO board which all of them will come with for the most part might as well go with a Noctua for that because uh, mister deserves it and then some of them comes with like come with heat sinks and things which can't hurt and so here's the list of sellers and actually if you go to the keep flipping through the pages you'll find even more people with these things so two things IO board and the SD RAM and then uh, you can buy your DE10 Nano on Amazon now so 130 bucks shipped so that is what the mister is the cores that you have on the mister and this is what drove me straight to it I started looking at them and all of a sudden I realized it has all of these classic arcade cores on it and that's something I've said kind of people talk about one in an FPGA based emulation of har arcade hardware and I always say well that's never I mean you're never gonna have like a MAME system where you have like 50,000 games supported because each one of those games essentially needs its own core just like you would write a new core specifically for an NES except the benefit of writing for the NES is when you're done with it you have thousands of games that it runs when you run it when you write an arcade core you could have just one game that runs on it or you might have just two or three, or I mean, if you were to core like MVS, you could have a few hundred. Uh, and so, translating arcade PCBs into FPGA emulation, 
uh, I can't tell you how incredible that is. I'm an arcade game collector. I have a big PCB collection. They're very expensive. I have this list, this never-ending list of games that I want. But some of them are just super expensive. A lot of them require their own power supplies. They're very the older games don't even have a JAMA edge, so they're very hard to get playing on a TV. And uh, when I started looking at the Mr. Cores, which I'll pull up here so you can see the list, right now I've got just uh, the arcade stuff here. Um, I mean, just take a look at these. You've got Burger Time, okay, very expensive PCB nowadays, non-JAMA. You have Donkey Kong. You have Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Galaga, Galaxian, uh, a lot of games that you would never see. I mean, there's Computer Space, the very first arcade game. I mean, it's not going to be a very impressive game to you, but unless you're going to a museum or somewhere where they have one of these, I don't know if Galloping Ghost has one. Um, yeah, you're just not, you're never going to see it. And the conversation about Mister for the last few years has been, it doesn't do this. These cores are incomplete. Blah 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 blah. And that might be true for the console cores. And you wouldn't buy a Mr. if you wanted right now a perfect Genesis. But you could buy it with the hope that Genesis is going to be finished one day. Because just a couple days ago, Genesis Core got a big update. They're working on audio issues and things like that. And I mean, once that's done, you can move on to things like uh, the Sega CD. There's no reason it can't handle that. 32X, things like that. Electron Ash is working on that pretty hard. And... Uh, just the other day, we got a uh, big PC Engine core update, and from what I'm told, uh, Raisha tested through. It does PC Engine and Super Graphics, and Raisha to and Turbo Graphics 16, of course. Raisha tested through every ter um, Super Graphics ROM that I have, and they were all essentially perfect. Only one weird demo didn't boot, so that's pretty good, and uh, everyone's raving about that. Uh, PC Engine Core. So if it was just called, instead of being called Mr., if it was called Super PC Engine, Super Turbo Graphics, I think you would have people lining up down the street for it. If you just look at the, and uh, a few other things. So the way I'm, I'm approaching it, and this is the way I want the conversation to go, is let's appreciate what's done and ready to use right now, because there's a ton of stuff. And anything after, to me, these arcade cores, it's all just a happy bonus. So, and we're talking major bonuses, like MSX, MSX2. Uh, there's a Sharp X68000 core in the works. Okay, these are very expensive systems. But um, yeah, so arcade cores are where it's at for me. There's that incredible list of games that are already working. These are games where the arcade PCB has been mapped out, translated back into the FPGA core. And if you were to buy these games, okay, I want to play Time Pilot at home. How much is that going to cost me? A lot. <laughs> you know, uh, if you want to play these games, these are not the console games. This is what the, all of the consoles are porting to them. Okay, so this is the original Frogger. This is the Galaga from the arcade that you grew up with. This is the Galaxian. Ms. Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Okay, they're selling, there are arcade FPGA kits out there that have like 10 games on them that cost $700. So actually, I'll talk about this while I have this page pulled up. So this is the Mr. Development page that shows the updates that are going on. So when somebody tells you in chat comments that Mr. the cores need work and nothing's happening and blah, 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 actually, there's a lot of stuff going on between releases of things, just like with the um, Red Guy's work on the SD2S NES cores. He's doing um, commits and things, and then eventually they'll do a release once they know it's ready to go. Okay, this concludes part one of my Mr. video. And in part two, I'll show a bunch of video clips that Risha has captured, and I'll just let the results speak for themselves. So you can check that out. If you want more details on everything Mr., you can watch one of my two streams on the subject. And I hope to have lots more Mr. content for you in the future. So thanks for watching.